Hi everyone, this is Andy Nguyen, and today we're going to be talking about why and how you can pick up your first 60% keyboard. And just to get started, a 60% keyboard means there's no number pad and arrow keys. So how do you make this work? Stay tuned. In this video, we're going to start by talking about how and why you would pick a 60% keyboard over a regular full-size keyboard what benefits you have and what you're giving up. The big thing about the 60% keyboards is there are no arrow keys. It just ends at the right control. And that's a little bit unnerving for some people, but we'll talk about it today. To get started, I should give you a little background as to who I am and what I do with computers so that you can see if my use case matches up with yours. I'm an engineer, so I do a lot of work in AutoCAD and I do creative work on the side, which means I am in Adobe Premiere, Adobe Lightroom, Adobe Photoshop, and I also play some competitive games. I prefer first person shooter games, which don't need the right arrow keys, we'll touch on that in a minute. And I play a little bit of RPGs. So what is a 60% keyboard? It is a small keyboard that gives up the number pad and arrow keys, and also the F1 through F12 keys. Sounds crazy, right? I know, I thought the same thing. The keys aren't any smaller, there's just no arrow keys and no number pad. And if you think about it, in most use cases for most people, they don't use the number pad all that often. And the arrow keys, same kind of story. I don't use the arrow keys all that often. The use case that would have a lot of use of the arrow keys would be someone who does a lot of work in Excel. What you also give up in this keyboard is the F1 through F12 keys. And honestly, I rarely use these. In Adobe Premiere, you can set them to be macros, but I tend to want to keep my shortcuts on the main keyboard itself. So the 6% keyboard is a stripped down version of a full size keyboard. The keys that you're giving up, they get remapped to the rest of the keyboard through the use of macros. So you can hold down a function key and then hit a letter or a number and it'll have a secondary or third function that is on a full size keyboard. So why would you do this? The main reason to do this that a lot of people run into is playing FPS shooters with low sensitivity. So in an FPS shooter, a shooting game, if you have low sensitivity, you need to travel a lot with your mouse. What some people experienced was when they were doing strong flicks, so moving right to left with the number pad in the way, they would hit the side of the keyboard. So to remedy this, if you're not using the number pad all that often, why not just chop it off the board? And the same goes for the arrow key. So basically you cut down the size of the keyboard and you keep your fingers in the center of the keyboard. This allows a more ergonomic positioning. So when you have a full size keyboard, like here, you have your left hand on the left side of it, the left portion of the main keyboard. You have your right hand off to the side with the mouse because there's arrow keys and a number pad in the way. And you're at this weird angle. It's, this is a little bit exaggerated for illustration purposes, but without the number pad and without the arrow keys, you can have your hands in front of you and be centered. This allows you to have less stress on your wrist and your elbow just going back and forth all day long. Ergonomics is very important to me. So having them closer together, centered, does alleviate the stress. It makes me feel more comfortable for working after working long hours or playing games for long hours, depending on your use case. And on top of that, having a smaller keyboard allows you to get your desk space back. Especially if you don't use the number pad a lot, if you're not doing a lot of number entry for work and you're not using the arrow keys, that space is literally wasted on your desk. Perhaps you're moving your keyboard around to get some space to write or work. With a smaller keyboard, you have much more of your desk space back. And even if it's not something practical, having a smaller keyboard, to me, is a little bit more aesthetic. It's a little bit more minimal. Declutters my mind to have less things on my desk. So why did I choose a 60% keyboard? Well, I came from a Corsair K70 Lux that I bought on Amazon Prime Day two years ago, and I just wanted an upgrade. I felt that the keyboard was pretty loud, even though I had Cherry MX Browns, which aren't the loudest switch. The loudest switch would be the Cherry MX Blues. Whenever I hit the space bar, it would just slam and rattle and shake up the house. Exaggerating, of course, but if you ask my fiance, that's what she would tell you. So I chose a 60% mechanical keyboard as an upgrade because 60% keyboard needs less money, right? Less keyboard, less cost. Not exactly. <laughs> I just wanted to try something more minimal. The 60% keyboards looked really aesthetic when I saw them on YouTube and saw other people with them on their desk. My Corsair K70 Lux was kind of a monstrosity. It took up the entire desk. I had an extended mouse pad to make it fit, but I was getting pretty tired of it. I had to move all the way to the left or all the way to the right to put my camera down or what other equipment I was using to work. I thought to myself and I figured I wasn't actually using the number pad and arrow keys all that often, so why not give it a try? And this video is just me talking about the things I've learned in that experience. So this keyboard right here, the Ducky 1-2 Mini, is just under 
12 inches long and that is crazy it's so portable I can throw this in my bag and I'm using the same keyboard for home as I am work right now and it's been a joy having a fully mechanical keyboard at work has made it so much more fun to be doing a little bit of data entry and, and designing on the computer I also wanted to give the community a try there's a community of mechanical keyboard users on reddit and it's just a very small community overall in the world and modifying these keyboards 60% is the most common size so that ends up being the cheapest option if it, if you go for a TKL or a full-size keyboard and you want to make it custom it's a lot more expensive because the demand is much less and also the 60% keyboard uses standardized keys so I can change out the keycaps really easily when you get into more exotic flavors like 65% 75% and various other keys the shift keys and other modifier keys are different sizes. I wanted something that felt a little bit familiar so I could adjust to it. I still have the option to upgrade it and modify it if I wanted. All right, so big questions about what is missing from this keyboard. So where is the number pad? The number pad is gone. So you can change this via macros if you want to put the number pad on the keyboard itself. So perhaps you could do QWE, ASD, ZXC, maybe Alt S0, and then the symbol up top. You can modify that with the function key and give you that number pad like feel back but it is staggered so it's not quite the same so if you have muscle memory it may not work out and also this is on the left side most number pads are on the right you be using your other hand and i tried this for a little bit it didn't quite work for me i ended up just using the numbers at the top of the keyboard and that worked faster in most scenarios and with the 60 percent keyboard you can also just buy a wireless or wired number pad to put on the left side of the keyboard this is a more ergonomic location because for me, when I'm entering numbers, I'm also using the mouse. In AutoCAD, I'm doing grading design, so I'll click a point on the computer, so I use my right hand click, and I need to enter numbers. What I would do before is lift my hand off of the mouse, go to the number pad, enter the numbers, and go back to the mouse. If I just have the number pad on the left, I can be entering numbers and clicking at the same time without moving my hands. This is really beneficial, and this is why you may see this kind of setup in some workplaces where the number pad is on the left. But what about my arrow keys? This is a bigger thing to lose. Going from a full-size keyboard down to a 60% keyboard is a big jump. So the arrow keys are something that people probably use more often than the number pad. So to replace these arrow keys, what most keyboard manufacturers have done is had a function layer and then made the I, J, K letters the arrow keys. So you'd hold down function, hit I, J, K, L, and you will get the arrow keys that way. You can navigate through the computer pretty easily using this, but my issue was in Adobe Premiere, I'm often using shift and arrow and alt and arrow. So if I had my left hand hitting the function key, so in this case I would use caps lock as a replacement for the function key, and my right hand doing IJKL, it'd be very hard to hit shift and alt. It just takes some learning and I just wasn't ready to do that, so I had a little bit of issue with this, but I don't use alt and shift and arrows too frequently so I just kind of like dealt with it took a little bit slower make sure I gen learned that muscle memory and it's working all right it's gonna take some learning and I've only been doing this for a week or two using these 6% keyboards that is a frustration that some other people may face but like I said you can use the caps lock button that's really infrequently used in most cases so you can you have your IJKL as arrow keys and you can do arrow movements without having your hand leave the main keyboard this is actually really nice. You can also path WASD, which is the common movement arrows in games, as your arrow keys. So you can hit caps lock with your pinky and your ring, middle, and index finger can be the arrow keys. And you can do this with just one hand. The function key and the macros are built onto these boards. So it's a really nice feature to have. On a full-size keyboard, most of the time, everything is locked via software. And for me, at my workplace, I can't download and install my own software. So going through the IT department to get software just because I want some special functions, that's usually a no-go. So having it on the board is a really nice feature. Another thing that I've noticed, and another thing my coworkers have been telling me was, hey, this keyboard is so small, I could never type on it. And that's the great thing about 60% keyboards. 60% keyboards, everything is the same size. Control, Windows, Alt, Spacebar, func the function, everything is the same size as a regular keyboard so you won't feel cramped in any way. None of the keycaps are any smaller. You just have less keys to work with. And I like that because it's less wasted space for keys I don't use that frequently. And when I need to use them, I can just hit the macro shortcut for it. So I feel like this video has been going for a little bit too long. So in terms of picking your first 60% keyboard, I'll link another video in the description below. 
where I can fully delve into the details regarding that. And just to give you a quick summary, the beginner boards are the AN Pro 2, the Vortex Poker, and the Ducky 1 2 Mini. These are true 60% keyboards, and they're available via Amazon, so fully accessible, no custom builds, no shipping from China, and there's a return policy. So if you want to know about which 60% keyboard to actually pick for your use case, click the link in the description below to find out my pick of the big three beginner boards. Hopefully that video has answered a lot of questions you've had about 60% keyboards. Feel free to comment below with any questions you have regarding 60% keyboards. And again, if you want to know which one to pick, click the link in the description. Please like this video if you like this kind of content. Please click subscribe if you want to see more. Make sure you click the notification bell to see my videos as soon as they are released. Thank you for watching. Have a nice day. Bye.